Hi. In this video, I'm going to be showing you um, my Flash CS 5.5 adventure game engine. Um, just to let you know, it's not a um, it's not fully integrated. I mean, it doesn't have pretty much every feature you would need, but it has enough to get you started. Like it has a basic inventory system and um, an objects handling system, uh, as well as a um, sort of map um, to uh, lay out the rooms in an easy way so you don't have to link the frames all uh, awkwardly together. And now when I say adventure game engine, I mean an adventure game, a point and click adventure game, sort of like the old Myst or Riven series from uh, Cyan. Um, I don't know if you've ever played that. Um, it's also sort of like um, those escape games if you've ever played um, any flash escape games on like addicting games or cafe cafe world or something like that um you'll know what i mean it's basically a game where you click certain objects they added they get added to your inventory and then you can use them in various ways um so in this video um i'm going to be providing source code um as well as a little description on how my engine works um just because i haven't seen like I've been looking for uh, an, a, a game engine for an escape game in uh, Flash, and I mean there are so many escape games on addicting games and stuff like that. Like I said, but I haven't been able to find a truly open source uh, engine for that kind of thing. So I just was like, you know what? That's it. I'm just gonna create my own. So I made my own, and this that's basically what this video is. Um, so I'm going to open and open up the template. Uh, it's just called ADV template because it's more of a template uh, flash file than an actual engine. But I'll show you what it is. So open this up. And you can see this really cheesy room one. Um, all of the images and uh, graphics and objects in the game um, are just for testing purposes, so there's a lot of really junky things on there, but it's just to make sure the um, core parts of the engine are working. Um, and now that I know that, now I c you can add your own pictures, your own rooms, your own objects to the game. But this is just uh, to demonstrate um, the effect, uh, the you know, the engine and how it works. So don't like complain about oh the graphics are horrible what are you thinking what what is what's the point of these like blotches and stuff well the blotches are just testing objects that i can use to test the inventory system and stuff like that um okay so i'll show you a bit of the code for this engine um it's going to be downloadable in the description anyway but i'll show you some of the code and then i'll show you how it works so i'll move down here and i'll go to timeline and right here and should load up this it's not there it is okay um so here's the code area right here that I have online um so this is uh the main code of the engine now I'll explain to you what each of these parts do so basically up here we have all our variable declarations like you usually would um and then we have um some event listeners that are added um, first of all, most of the code for this engine is just right on the third frame of the main movie clip. Um, but there is also one other separate file called inventory.as, which uh, contains a class um, that handles the inventory objects. And I'll show that to you uh, in a sec. But anyway, um, after we add these event listeners, then we create a new array right here. And this is what's interesting and what I thought is makes my engine a little bit better than the others. And that is that all of the rooms that you have in your adventure game are mapped out on this grid right here. Um, so what happens is you see down here I set map X and map Y to 4x4. Four four. Um, so 4x4 four four happens to be this right here. Um, and the degrees map deg equals zero means you're facing upwards. So if you're facing upwards from this point, you're going to be seeing room one. That's why it says 01 right there. 
Then when you turn to the right, you'll see room 2. Turn again, you'll see room 3. And turn one more time, and you'll see room 3 again. And then you turn again, and you'll go back to room 1. So basically, it's little circles um, of rooms uh, which surround you. And so there is a view from every direction. So there's a front view, a back view, and two side views to um, every room in the game. So as you can see, here's um, this is the first room right around here with those parts that I showed you right here. Those are all the backgrounds. Um, and then if you go, if you try to go forward from here, it won't let you because it's zero up here. But if you try to go to the right, it will let you because over here, as you can see, there's another room where there are four sides surrounding. See? So that's basically how it works. So all you have to do is um, you go to um, the object over over here. It's called Game Rooms. You double click that and then you go to your timeline and now inside your timeline you can see that you have all the rooms. So basically you just create more keyframes in there and just add uh, in um, all the different rooms that you want and put all the different objects in them. And then um, e it starts with one right here. So you add all those things in and then you go back. Um, you go back uh, to the main scene right here. And um, then you just go back into this array right here and you just change all these room numbers to the corresponding rooms of those frames and it will automatically load so that's all you have to do and you can make this array as large as you want if you want if you need it larger than this you can obviously increase the size of it um just make sure you always leave a border of zero around the whole thing um because if you don't uh, when you try to go forward or uh, go a certain direction, uh, the engine will try to look for um, an index that's out of bounds and it'll throw an error. So always keep zeros around the edge uh, as a border. Um, so yeah, just a little bit about the engine. Change cursor, that basically just changes the uh, cursor from to show which direction you're going to go in when you click. Um, and then we have some other stuff down here. Basically, this is pretty complicated, all of this you see right here. Um, all this code right here, um, it just um, calculates what room you need to go to when you press the mouse. So that's pretty much what all that does. And then this last part here is the part that actually um, loads the room and also checks if um, an object is in your inventory. And if it is, then it doesn't display the object again on the screen so that like when you go to a different room and you come back after you've taken something it won't be there again so that's what this part does it handles that um yeah so that's about it for this um part of it now there's one other class uh, of code um and that is the inventory class right here so I'll open it up and inside of it, you can see, hold on, let me drag this. All right, um, so this is the inventory class. And this handles all the inventory items, obviously. Um, basically, what it does is it just has a few, it has an array up here with stores the items. Uh, another thing for the sprite. Um, and so over here um, when you add when you're adding more items to your game this is where you're gonna do it so if you put a new object inside of a game room so remember earlier I was showing you this game rooms object down here um, so if you add more objects to a frame on that um, movie clip what you need to do is you need to add a case in here that says uh, case and then whatever the name of the item is and then use whatever. So you just add case 
item underscore and then whatever the name of your item is and then down here you just put the code for what you want your item to do and like I said this is all in inventory.as um, so you just add all those things in there um, all your actions and stuff and then the default down here has to stay the same this basically just um, this is for items that you actually have to pick up to use so um, if you uh, up here is where you put objects that you um, when you as soon as you click the item in your inventory it does something that's where you put it but if it's a kind of item where you click it and it attaches to your mouse and then you drag it onto something else then that is handled by this and where you need to put your code for that is right here in this um, do events with object function this is the area where you add those events for objects that you actually drag another or not drag but you click and it attaches to your mouse and then you can use it on another object so for any of those kind of objects that's where you you put it you put it in this part for those more normal objects where you just click it in the inventory and it automatically does it you put it up here um so yeah that's basically how it works pretty simple um just add in all your own code in there and so I'll just sort of show you how it works I'll run through it here start it up and uh, the default um, background screen is this I was I got kinda bored at one point when um I was having trouble with a certain part of the code that I couldn't figure out so well I posted on a form and waited I decided to make this background picture which I think turned out pretty well um, actually it was made in a really strange way basically how it was made is I actually used the game engine called Sourbrotten and created a whole level in a 3D environment and then took a screenshot of it and then used um, a combination of GIMP and um, and Photoshop to trace uh, the image so it ended up looking like this and then I also changed the contrast and a few other things but that's about it so that's how I got like made this image if you're interested and no I did not actually draw this it's just a trace 3d thing anyway um, so here's the engine uh, instructions and credits don't work because that's for you to add um, you, I mean I don't really need it for the demo so so you press play and it starts out it just shows room one uh, if you go to the right it shows room two and if you could see that grid at the same time that array that I was showing you earlier you could understand how this corresponds to that but I can't show you at the same time um, so just believe me it works um, you go to the right you go to room three again and then again and then room one again room two again and see it's it's just basically a circle if I keep clicking it just keeps going and um, so this thing right here put stuff in this just demonstrates um, how the objects work so I can go over here and collect these objects right here collect that there we go collect those and um, then I just open up this panel down here by clicking on this and when I open up that panel it, it shows all my inventory right here and so I just take an object and it does not matter which object you take um, because it automatically um, reorders these items in here so if you take an item that's not at the end of the list it pushes it back over so that's not a problem it used to be though um, but anyway I added it to this this whole thing here and it says under output added to whole so that means it worked um, so I'll add these other two hold on added that one and added this one there we go um, and now this object is a little different this object demonstrates the kind of object that uh, does 
attach something as soon as you click on it, and it doesn't attach to the mouse. So, um, you can see, as soon as I click it, it says, use in the box one. So, it does whatever function as soon as you click it. Um, thing is, is uh, these objects are a little weird, so sometimes when you click on them, they don't register. Uh, that's just because they're not, like, they're, they have a lot of holes in them and stuff. But if you're using real objects for your own game, that shouldn't be a problem. Um, so yeah, that pretty much uh, concludes the demo. And, oh wait, no, a few more things. Um, as you can see, after I've taken all those objects, when I go back, they're not there anymore. Um, which was super hard to do, but I, I got it to work. So, um, yep, if you're interested in a sort of simple uh, but expandable uh, adventure engine for Flash, um, this is pretty much it. And it's open source. I'm going to attach the source and the project file to the description of this video. And um, subscribe to my channel. And I uh, probably should be looking for, um, in the future, a few more Flash videos. Um, maybe one VB6 video, because I'm starting to not use that as much. And also, I might do a video on lasers, which is something completely different, which I haven't done before. But I might decide to do um, some laser show videos, um, showing you how to create your own laser, laser shows in uh, software such as Pangolin and stuff like that. Um, so, uh, if you like these videos, subscribe to my channel. And, um, yep, thanks for watching.